Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Marathon Quick Stops Eddie Spradlin Show, where we cover everything inside of Burley Stadium with the Greenville Green Devils. As always, I'm here with head coach Eddie Spradlin. Back to our old setup, I guess oh, yeah. you could say. Yeah, yeah. We're not sponsored by Greenville Federal <laughs> Bank anymore, but it's nice to have that sign in the background. Oh, yeah. So once again, as we mentioned with uh, Botman Bernard down there, one free promo. Outside of that, you got to pay for the rest <laughs> of the year. So. Sitting here inside of Burley Stadium, hadn't been here and played in a few weeks. You traveled up to Alcoa on Thursday night. Tough, tough battle as we talked about playing big boy football against a team that has won nine straight state championships in 3A. Down by one at half, couldn't get anything on the board in the second half, fell 31 to 13 in the end. Talk about that game and take me through it all. You know, uh, like you said, it was a big time uh, football environment, big time game. Uh, you go down there on the road, you know, Two teams battle back and forth. It's scoreless after the first quarter. Uh, you know they get on the board uh, uh, first, then we answer, then we're able to, uh, you know, go down and uh, score after a turnover. So uh, you know we were up 13 to seven there, and um, we end up let them score right there before the half with seven seconds left. You know we gotta be able to keep them out and you know we had the momentum right there if we could have kept them out it w would have been a big difference in that game because you know they got the football coming out uh we got we got to get better on the you know cover on kickoff we talked about that i think last week we gave up another big one you know besides that one we did pretty good but you know they put their best player back there in the quarterback and uh you know he was able to get a big return to start the second half and uh, give them a really good field position and short field and they were able to score and, and go up. So uh, kind of took us out of our game plan. Uh, we were able to work our game plan, what we wanted to do during the second quarter. And uh, as a result, we were you know able to put two scores on the board, but um, got to be able to uh, get off the field defensively in a big game like that. And we've got to be able to move the chains. We get to you know third and short, fourth and short right there. And we ended up punting about midfield, you know, take it back. And, you know, I might have, would have, should have went for it there, but uh, I don't want to second guess the decisions we make during the game. And I know Eli Graff was as advertised too. Was he as advertised for you guys? I know you talked about going into the game that you needed to contain him, and he was a difference maker in the game. I think he had four total touchdowns, one passing, and then three on the ground, and then he had a huge kickoff return, as you mentioned. Also, was he just as advertised as you thought going into the game? Oh, even better. You know, we uh, we talked about it. That I think that was one of our keys to to winning the football game. Uh, you know, I said we wouldn't be able to contain him. Uh, or we're not, you're not going to be able to stop that kid, but you, we've got to be able to limit that what he can do on Friday night. And uh, you know we didn't do a good job stopping that. He made some really good hard nose runs. Uh, probably one of the best uh, quarterbacks uh, you know I've seen since no we played. Uh, since I've been the head coach for sure. You know he's just a hard nose. You know he plays on a, a corner and physical at corner. And then he you know returns a punch returns. Uh, kickoffs uh, he was their punter on Friday night so you know he did everything for them and you know we talked about it he, he was what make them go on offense you know they had a big tight end who's division one they've got a receiver that's got a uh, Louisville offer out there and, th and those guys didn't do anything to, to really hurt us but uh, you know Eli did a, a really good job of running the football and uh, we didn't play our responsibilities as good as we needed to defensively and it, it, you know ended up costing us on for, uh, Thursday night. Wanted to talk about your offense a little bit also because you had 210 total yards and a good percentage of that came from the usual duo of Caden Ball and Carson Quinn. They each had 95 yards on the ground, Carson with a touchdown and then Caden with a touchdown also. Those were your two touchdown scores. So was it tougher to get things going? I know your total yard, yardage was a little lower than we've seen so far this year. And I know, of course, going into the game, you knew that Alcoa's defense was going to be the toughest test so far through four games. So was it tougher to get things going against that big Alcoa defense? Oh, for sure. You know, uh, they had played with a different speed than, you know, what we've seen all year, even from, you know, preseason camp against, uh, you know, Science Hill. And they don't have that speed that Alcoa has. You know, uh, a lot of people want to – they got beat the first game of the year. So oh, Alco's down. You know, it's as good as they've ever been. Yeah. You know, it's physical and, and the speed that they play with and the, all the skill positions is. You know, we're a fast football team, but the, you know, it was a little different on Friday or Thursday night with what we were going up against. But you know, we play that game. You know, obviously to try to win that game, but to make our football team better. Uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of haters out there because we got beat first uh, region game we've lost in like three years. But um, when you play teams like that, it's gonna be a battle and one good football team is gonna have to take the L on that and you 
know, on, on Thursday night it was us. You know, we would have, you know, we were able to convert a, a big third down to keep the chains moving. Then we got a holding penalty. Then we got, you know, fourth and short, we stopped them. Then we got stopped them on fourth down for a measurement, and they ended up getting them. Just, you know, a couple of things. We don't give up a big kickoff return. You know, three of their scores came from special teams miscues, you know, from uh, we kicked them. Uh, we scored, then we kicked it out of bounds and gave them the ball on the 35 to start this, uh, that last drive right before the half. Uh, we shanked the punt in the first half and gave them really good field position, and they scored off that drive. And then we give up a big uh, kickoff return to start the second half, and they end up scoring. So not saying they wouldn't have scored on those situations, but we helped them out and gave them a lot better field position by uh, having miscues on special teams in that game. And, uh, you know, we've uh, had to do some different things with special teams. You know, special teams coordinator for us has been Coach Jones. And, you know, I don't know if we've talked about Coach Jones, but he's not been with us, you know, majority of the season. So um, some guys have stepped up on special teams. And, you know, I, this week I'm going to take on defensive ends. Coach Hayes, he's trying to coach all four of them. But, you know, I'm going to start coaching defensive ends with him missing and just so they're getting a little more attention. So, uh, you know, it's been a big Big miss having uh, not having Coach Jones out there, uh, but you know uh, we can't. And you go in a football game like that, you can't have miscues or things that, in those type of games, or, or it's going to cost you. So uh, uh, really, like I said, great football team, as good as football team we've played since I've been the head coach, without a doubt. And uh, you know didn't go our way in the second half. Played a, a really physical football game for four quarters. You watch that film, and we're you know, we're still playing hard the whole game. That You know, there's a play here, too, that uh, some guys take off. But for overall, those guys played really hard, really proud of their effort. But, you know, like I said, you can't give up. You can't give a good football team more opportunities than we did. And, you know, <coughs> we start the game off. We're moving the football. We get down near the red zone, and we throw an interception and, uh, you know, gave them the ball back. Even if, you know, we get down there and we don't score, it makes them have a long, even longer way to, uh, to drive the football. But can't turn it over. You got to get turnovers. We got one turnover uh, in the game, and we were able to score after that turn turnover, which was big. So, uh, overall, proud of our effort. Uh, got to get back to work this week. And that's one thing I think you alluded to is there were probably a lot of people that were happy to see Greenville lose the other night because oh, yeah, it's about. a rarity in the regular season. I think I'd mentioned that it's the last time I think you had lost in the regular season, dating back to I think maybe 2021 in the Elizabethan game at the very end of the season. So. It's a rare regular season Greenville loss that you don't see a lot of times early this season. And I talked about it Saturday morning. A lot of times when Greenville loses, you go undefeated through the regular season. And then the first time you lose is the last game of the season when you get knocked out of the playoffs. So a lot of those kids, especially the kids that are now juniors and seniors, don't know how that feels to lose in the middle of the regular season. I would hate to be Morristown West next week because that's one thing that I spoke about Saturday morning is I expect you guys to come back strong. I expect you guys to come back more hungry because it's rare that these kids take a regular season loss, and they're not used to that. Going into a rivalry game like Morristown West, they're probably going to be a little more fired up too. So how do you think they respond going into next week after taking a rare regular season loss? You know, we'll see today at practice. You know, we got to go have a, a tough one, get after it. Uh, you know, you better not wear your feelings during film today. We're going to get in there and watch some film and review that stuff and coach off of it, try to make us a better football team. Uh, and then we'll come out here and practice and work to get better. You know, we've got to continue to get better. You know, we've got a really good football team. We just went up against a, a, a very, a, very good, very football, good team. football team that, you know, is going to be in uh, state champions if they can stay healthy, just like anybody else. you got to stay healthy at that level. But, you know, the depth that they've got, uh, at some different positions and their skill guys are as good as we've seen since I've been a head coach without a doubt. And I know going through those stat leaders one more time, I like to go through that. Caden Ball was 4 of 7 for 20 yards, 95 on the ground with a rushing touchdown. Carson Quinn, 19 rushes, 95 yards and a touchdown. I talked about it also. He might be a little beat up this morning and on or beat up on Friday and Saturday mornings because he's not used to getting hit a lot. A lot of times he breaks off those huge runs, he goes far ways. But Carson might be beat up a little bit after yeah, going you, up against you those watch tough that film, boys. You know, he's he's as physical runner as we've had in a long time, and he's dang running those guys over and physical with Alcoa. 
uh, and the good thing is we come out of that game, you know, nobody's banged up or uh, no big injuries or nothing. And, you know, you, you play that type of physical football game and you're able to, you know, be pretty much injury free. That says a lot about how hard those guys are working in the weight room and what we're doing as a program to make sure that the, our guys are recovering the way that they need to be doing. So, uh, you know, it's big for us. You, you can't let, you know, injuries from uh, that game go over to the next one. You know, like I said, our first five games are tough, uh, yes. tough schedule to go through, and uh, we're able to uh, stay pretty healthy in that. And, you know, you, like you said, you got to have Carson healthy. And, you know, like he, he took a, a lot of hits on uh, Thursday night, but, you know, I talked to him earlier today. He said he feels really good. So, um, you know, excited to, to get to work today and starts with uh, what we're going to do in the weight room and then get out here on the practice field this afternoon. Fortunate to come out of that game without any injuries. Fortunate that you've got eight days between games now as you've got a big non-region rivalry game coming up with Morristown West. We'll cover that in the second half, though. So we'll be right back in just a minute. We'll see you here right back on the field here on Grassroots Media. At Corner Pond, the friendly and knowledgeable staff has the experience necessary to help you out regardless of the need. Have an item of value you'd like to pawn or sell? Corner Pond can help. They pawn numerous items of value, including Firearms, tools, ammunition, silver, coins, and much more. When you walk through their doors, you'll find well-stocked shelves full of electronics, gaming systems, fishing and hunting equipment, car audio and accessories. And don't forget about the room full of guitars and basses and amplifiers, or their outside lawn and garden equipment. Corner Pond is a case knife dealer and carries numerous used knives as well. Stop by and let the friendly staff at Corner Pond help you today at 432 East Bernard Avenue, Greenville, Tennessee. Pizza Inn offers contactless buffet to go with JoJo's Family Feast or anything on our menu for carryout. We also honor birthday parties and cater to businesses and large events. We make it easy. Call us today. Pizza Inn, Greenville. edition of the Marathon Quick Stops Eddie Spradlin Show where we cover everything on the field here at Burley Stadium with the Greenville Green Devils football team. As always, I'm joined here with head coach Eddie Spradlin. So you've got a big non-region rivalry game this week. Unfortunately, you go on the road for the third straight yeah. week now. It feels like you've been living away from home for every Friday and Thursday night now for a while. But you've got Morristown West, a big rivalry game as a lot of people know. Uh, a lot of older Greenville fans know about the rivalry more than a lot of the newer kids do because the newer kids have basically kind of controlled that rivalry for a while now. I don't know how many in a row it's been, but I know these seniors, juniors, nobody on this team has lost to Morristown West. They want to do the same going into this game. So what's your game plan going into Morristown West on Friday night? <clears throat> you know, it'll be uh, obviously, like you said, it's a big time rivalry game that uh, means a lot to this both communities. And like you said, the, these younger kids really don't know, uh, but you talk to some of the, our, our coaches and uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Some of the coaches and uh, community members, they want to win this one as bad as anything. So uh, it'll be a big time environment on Friday night uh, down there um, against a really good football team. You know, they kind of stumbled the first game, turned the ball over a couple and got behind against a much improved Morristown East uh, football team. But, uh, you know, they, they've got to, they came out and won two big games and uh, uh, playing really good right now. So it'll be a big time challenge. Uh, you know, a challenge that we need to go against, you know, after a big, uh, you know, game against Alcoa last week. You can't let what happened last week uh, carry over to this week. So, you know, played them last year and we were up 24 nothing at halftime. And I think that, you know, uh, Carson went out at halftime and then we kind of just survived and ended up 24-21. They got that same running back back that runs really hard, got a big offensive line. So um, it, it'll be a, a, a big game and a tremendous challenge for our football team. I know a lot of Morristown people joke around if they have to go to the Tri-Cities, they'll go around Greenville instead of going <laughs> through Greenville. So 
that just kind of tells you how much the rivalry means to a lot of those older citizens that have kind of endured this rivalry throughout their past as high school athletes, coaches, or just fans from the stands. But you talked about having the same running back back. You talked about kind of surviving in the second half of that game last year. What do you expect from their offense? Will you expect some of the same last year that you'll be trying to contain? Yeah, they're going to establish the run game. They got a big offensive line. They try to be physical with people. And they got two really big running backs, both over 210 pounds. So, um, you know, one of them's probably heavier, close to 225 pounds. So it's going to be a big challenge for us. Uh, they're going to establish that running game and try to uh, keep our offense off the field. So. Um, you know, especially, uh, especially uh, um, you know, what they see on film before, you know, last week to just scoring fast. And, um, you know, they're I believe they're a lot better offensively than they are defensively. So, uh, you know, they're going to try to control that clock for sure. And I know so far we've talked, I think, every week now that you've got the dynamic duo of Caden Ball and Carson Quillen at quarterback and running back. I think a lot of teams now that they've seen you play four games kind of expect that now. Do you think that Morristown West will kind of sell out to stop the run? What do you think they'll run on defense? Yeah, everybody, everybody's going to try to stop the run. You know, last week, we, you know, we got to – they were getting eight, nine guys in the box, and we didn't throw the football very well. So we got to be able to throw the ball better uh, to, you know, open that, stretch the field, and then get some of those guys out of the box. Or we're going to be able to, you know, we got to beat people throwing the football over their head. You know, we got really good playmakers with Zayn Anderson, Taryn Clarity out there that we didn't get the ball enough last week. So we got to get them the ball, and they got to be involved in this offense to, to uh, you know, get us going on offensively this week. For you as a coach, is this one of the games that you kind of get more excited for? I know the rivalry games are always special, but there's a few games that I think every Greenville fan circles on their calendar that they get most excited for. Is this one of the ones that you get most excited for personally? Yeah, you know, it's a, uh, you talk about, you know, East Tennessee football, you know, Morristown West, one of those programs one that has to be mentioned in there Absolutely. as good as they've been. And, uh, you know, I believe they played for a state championship a few years ago or, uh, or a while back, but it's you know a, a program when we came here uh, as a coaching staff in uh, 2007, that they were the top football team in that region, and uh, you know we had to, you know we were able to to get some wins over them, and uh, had some really good football games over the years, and I expect nothing else but a big time game on Friday night. And as always, too, going into that game on Friday night, when you go on the road to play the Trojans, what are your three keys to the game? You know, offensively, we've got to be able to establish the line of scrimmage again. <coughs> we've got to get, you know, those guys, you know, Carson and Caden run the football good. And, you know, anytime we can get those both of those guys over 100 yards, we've got a chance to be successful. You know, that's key number one. And key number two, we've got to get the football and those playmakers' hands out there on the edge and let them make something happen. So uh, get the ball out there to them and let them guys make some happen. We've got to get them involved in the offense. And, uh, you know, also, the third one this week has got to be you know, we got to be better on kickoff team. We got to cover the football, and you know we got to do a better job covering. And we got the ability to kick it in the end zone. We need to kick the thing in the end zone if we can. And the last one, I'm gonna add a fourth one this week. We got to be able to, to control their run game. They're gonna try to run the football on us. We got to be able to uh, you know control that run game for sure. Absolutely. I love four keys to the game yeah. because sometimes it's not just three. There's yeah. more than three yeah. things that you have to control to be able to win a football game on Friday. But it's a big week. It's Morristown West looking to get back in the win column. As I said, I would hate to be Morristown West because a lot of these kids don't know how they've had to respond to a loss. So I feel like a lot of your kids are going to go out there looking for revenge after last week's loss to Alcoa, especially in a rivalry game against Morristown West. But until next time, Coach. I appreciate, appreciate you man. once again. again Go you're Devils. The, you're the smartest man out here with the hat on right now. I've been <laughs> yeah. in the sun's right above me the whole time. I've had to squint and look yeah. away the whole entire interview. But as a joke that one of my former teachers used to say, it's been there for millions of years, and it'll be in the same place a million years from now, too. <laughs> yeah. But that's all we've got. Thank you all for watching this week's edition of the Marathon Quick Stops Eddie Spradlin Show. Look forward to seeing you all next time here on Grassroots Media. Mm -hmm.